Well, well, guess who didn't hit the stream live button? I was streaming all by myself. It was like I was in a well by myself. Sorry, you guys. I did like 20 minutes of the show and then my wife like slowly opens my studio door and she's got a sign. and She's like, you're not live streaming. <laughs> but what was weird is I have my phone here. I'll explain in a second. Uh, I've got my phone over here and I could see comments. I could see all the comments. I'm like, oh, there's people here. I'm saying hello to people. And it actually wasn't going out. I could just see it here. So even though I worked out all these things today for you guys, I have a, I have a show. Oh, man, I, I did so much of the show too. All right. Got to redo it. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to Tuesday Music. I'm going to tell you what's going on here. A couple of changes. Um, the good thing is I've already practiced all this. I already went through a lot of this. But thanks for being here. Uh, Rebecca, Roseanne, Lacey. Um, I'm reading comments on my phone now. So uh, welcome. Cornelius, John, Paul. See, I already said hello to you guys, but you didn't. you didn't know that. Uh, Mary's here, John is here, Daryl, awesome, Bill, hey, welcome, Bill. Um, <laughs> you guys, unbelievable. Uh, so I just, I, I feel so foolish right now. But this is part of the thing, this is what it is. Um, 
So what are we doing today in today's show? Uh, besides starting a little bit late, um, I was in my own parallel universe. Now we're in the same universe. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is Tuesday Musee. I'm Kalani. And today's show is about percussion skills, uh, music skills, but kind of like drumming skills. And I wanted to kind of do a basics because some of you, I know some of you are, are percussionists and, you know, you've been playing for a while. But some of you are more, I would say, in the curious enthusiast category, or maybe you're an elementary music teacher or facilitator or music therapist, and you want to um, know, like, what skills do I really need? You know, what are, what are the essential skills? And so even though we've got zillions of videos, did you guys know we're over a thousand videos on World Drum Club now? Yes. Uh, even though there's lots and lots of videos, I know some of those don't necessarily apply to the people who just want to know the basics. And so what I'm doing today is I'm going to identify kind of, you know, uh, what's the word? Filter down, solidify, and distill. That's the word I was looking for. Distill down to kind of the essence um, of what are the kind of core skills you need, you know, just to play percussion, get in, play some music, hang out, uh, and, and then go from there to develop. So that's what we're looking at today. I've got a few videos. I'm not doing, we're not doing a lot of other stuff. We're gonna focus on this. And I'm using the book uh, that I wrote called Kalani's World Rhythms. You'll see it, you'll see a couple videos from that. It's a multimedia package I did for upper elementary middle school a few years ago. And I'm just gonna show you a couple videos on that uh, because it's it's here and I thought you'd get a kick out of it. They're kind of fun. So the first one I'm going to show you is actually a conga lesson. And the question I had to ask myself was, what's the quickest, like shortest path to teaching somebody the basics of conga, uh, you know, that I could do? And so this is what I came up with. And what I need to tell you, oh, I got to go grab my keyboard. What I'm going to tell you also, let me see if I can do this. is here. What I'm doing today is I'm trying to stay over here on the percussion station. Of course, I've, I've already not done that just because I left my keyboard over there because I was trying to fix some stuff from when I wasn't streaming. Um, but now that I am streaming, uh, I have to go get my keyboard. So what I'm doing is I'm going to try to stay here today. So I've got my phone for your for your comments and I got my keyboard so I can operate my computer which is like eight feet away right now I can't really see it that well but what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna share this with you guys because I think it's kind of funny is I've got my Bluetooth keyboard and so this we're gonna see if this works if I press the down key uh, it should go to the next slide next the next scene and then I press enter and then that then it will engage it so let's see if that works this should be a conga lesson real quick, and I'll see you on the other side. Let's see if it works. It didn't work. Let me go again. I know it's down here somewhere. Let me go check it. Hold on. All right, I'm not in the right window. Got it. Here we go. To play the conga drum, find a comfortable seated position so the drum head is at a height that allows your fingertips to your elbow to be pretty much flat when your hand is placed on the head. You're going to tip the drum slightly to your dominant side, and we're going to play two tones. The first one is called the bass or the low tone, and you're going to do that by striking the drum with your fingers and palm together, your whole hand, just inside the edge of the drum and bouncing off. Don't strike the bass in the middle because that's a dead spot. The open tone is our other tone. You're going to use your fingers together like one unit, lining up your knuckle line with the edge of the drum, bouncing off the head to let it ring. And then combine both those tones for rhythms. There you go. I was just reading some of your comments on my phone. Uh, I do appreciate you guys hanging out. I can't believe it was like 30 minutes practically. And um, you guys are still here. 
So thank you. <laughs> oh my God, it's like I'm late for my own party, you know? Um, all right, we'll get to your questions a little bit later. Bank those or wait to ask the questions and we'll do the question asking at the same time so that they're in the same spot in the chat, right? So nobody has to go scrolling up and down. So that was a very short conga lesson. Um, I've got another video I wanna show you. So that was on, on technique, but I have another video I wanna show you right now that's on rhythms and ensembles, because I'm gonna cover both quickly in this, in this uh, we're still gonna go an hour, I think. I still wanna go at least 45. We'll go to like quarter after. If you can hang out, that's fine. If not, I understand. Um, because technique and tones and rhythms, they're all kind of related. So I wanna play you this, uh, another, another video, and look, you guys, we started with no Kalani's, now you've got one Kalani, and if you like more, if you like the idea of more Kalani's, you're gonna love this next video. Uh, here it is. Kaki Lambe. One, two, one, two, three, four. I warned you, I told you guys. It's a lot of Kalani's and I know what you're thinking. How many of those shirts does this guy own? He loves Tommy Bahama. Um, the answer is a lot, a lot. <laughs> so that was a rhythm ensemble that we teach in the, in the program in the Kalani's World Rhythms. That's a you know West African drumming ensemble. These are geared towards upper elementary so Things have been simplified, but not to the point where the rhythms are unrecognizable. So the, the goal of this curriculum was to do some authentic music, you know, teach the kids rhythms, techniques, and show them the actual instruments, like the djembe, um, and congas, and we do rhythms from Brazil. We got some Brazilian music, some Afro-Cuban music, and some West African music, and we really tried to use the actual instruments from those cultures. I think it's important uh, to not just play everything, you know, on a, like a tube drum or some drum that's not that's not representative of the culture. Um, so we really tried to do that in this, and I'm proud that we did it. Um, I want to point out one thing, and this relates to everything we're talking about today, which is uh, skills. That ensemble started with a very simple, steady pattern, right? We had kashishi, just ch, 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 ch. And then we added a bell, and it was just double time. Ding, 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 ding. Then we had a repeating pattern on the block. And that gave us what I call our, our rhythmic grid. It's like graph paper, right? It, it, it spells out. Here's the meter, here's the time, here are the subdivisions. Then we start to add the drum patterns, doom, doom, dee, 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 or whatever it is. And we, we did a couple djembe patterns, and we had a couple doon, doon patterns, the bass drums. And so that's what I recommend you do when you're building ensembles. Start with something simple. And if you, you didn't see me do the looping earlier, I sort of went straight. I'm just using the looping. But I did play all these parts at the top of the show, like I usually do. Um, and then I built this pattern. Three, four. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But before 
before we do all the fancy stuff, we just have, you know, simple pattern. So um, you build from steady and, you know, repetitive out to the, your more, your longer patterns and your more syncopated patterns, all right? And that's how you can practice. So let's get to it. Let's get to some essential skills. What are the essential skills? I know everybody thinks about drumming and playing drums, but I recommend that everyone learn how to play the shaker. It can be an egg shaker, it can be a tube shaker, it doesn't really matter. Any kind of shaker. Let me show you the overhead. I'm just gonna get the shaker. And in this case, I robbed a nest. Uh, and just, you know, it's a simple movement. Simple. And then you add some accents. And that's where just a simple action becomes a musical sound, musical action. How do we play music? We, we use dynamics. We use micro timing to get a feel. Um, we use uh, muscle, we use control, you know, muscle control to get steadiness and accuracy, all those things. And that's why we need to practice, we need to play a lot. But you have to know what to practice and why. So I would say play a shaker. You can do that anywhere, anytime, almost without offending anybody around you, anytime. Um, then from there, I'm also, we're going to get to the drums in a second, but I want to recommend that you guys get a couple sticks, get some drumsticks, um, because a lot of instruments, bells, blocks, but even the bigger drums like dun dunes and surdos, you're using a stick. And so even if you think of yourself as a hand percussionist, you know, as I do, mainly I'm a hand percussionist, we're still using sticks a lot. So what does that mean for you? It means you need to get the, I call it the percussive stroke. It's a percussive action. And I know this is a little out of focus, but just, it's okay, bear with me. Um, learn how to do this. Relaxed. Just play, play with a stick. So what are you not doing? You're not gonna go like this. We don't do that. You're not going like this. You don't have to line it up, you know, with your arm and go, it just relax. And here's, here's how we hold this stick. It, it's kind of at an angle to your forearm. Notice my finger, I'm just grabbing uh, with my index and thumb mostly. And then my other fingers are resting on the stick. Pretty easy, just light. I'm talking about just like a drum lesson right now, basic drum lesson. And learn how, I've got a drum thrown right here. You can play on a pillow or anything. Play on something that's that's dead, that's got that's not doing the work for you. And learn how to do this. Do one hand at a time. Nice and easy. Bounce. Other hand. And then do a roll. Do it with a metronome. Then learn how to do some accents. Why? Why? <laughs> because that's music. That's musical. That's the difference between just beating on something and playing music on something is accents, feel, consistency, control. That's all technique. It's part of technique. So technique allows us to play the music, right? Or I would even say access the music. The music is always there. But how do we manifest it? We manifest it through, through work, through technique, and, and then our own understanding and our own aesthetics. But the key is, you know, get that percussive stroke. It's not, I'm not asking you to do a lot. Just, you know, learn how to hit something with a drumstick. Now, oh my God, thank goodness we're getting to the drums now. Everybody's been waiting for the drums. Um, just learn how to play uh, a low tone and a high tone. You know, if it's a conga drum, you could just do a bass, do your open tone. So it's a nice sound. Let me turn this down a little because the drums are louder. A 
Learn how to play a nice tone. Maybe a slap. And that's it. Uh, it's, not, it's not too complicated. You don't have to do a lot of fancy stuff. But of course, you're going to want to learn how to play your basic tones, conga, djembe, cajon, bongos, and then any other instruments. All those, pretty much, for the most part, are transferable. So what do you do? Just work on this, relaxed, be relaxed. Work on your open tones so they sound different than your slaps. Differentiate those. And then when you go play patterns and you play the different rhythms and things, uh, it will sound musical. So that's what I want for you guys. That's about it, all right? So what do we do? Shaky stuff, tambourines, shakers, kashishi, consistency, but learn how to put some accents into it. Learn how to play um, with a stick, and then when you go to play something like a cowbell, now there is a little bit of technique. Let me just sneak one more thing in here. When you play any percussion instrument, there's always the, how do you hold it? Where do you strike it? What are the different tones you can play? How are you incorporating, maybe muting with striking? Right? And then that's how we turn something um, that we stole from a cow into a musical instrument. They're never gonna find this cow now. Nobel. All right. Maybe that cow will get the Nobel Prize. You know there was gonna be dad jokes. It's there's always dad jokes. <sighs> Someday you'll learn. All right, let's say hello, and then after we after we check in, I'm gonna show you guys how I teach. Uh, a, a pattern. I've got this thing I, I created a few years ago. I, 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 um, I mean, it's not something that I just created. It's something that I've been doing and I have a lot of success with it. So I call it PUPS, which stands for pattern, pulse under pattern sequence, pulse under pattern sequence. And it's shown in the book. Um, so we're going to do that in a second. Uh, this is the title or the cover. And by the way, if you want to find out more, you can scan this. QR code, that'll take you to a video that's about this. So, but right now we're gonna do pups. <laughs> there it is. Uh, but first I just wanna say hello to everybody again. And uh, thank you for hanging out and being here. Yes, bada boom. Um, all right, I'm gonna kinda go on with this, but what I want you guys to do is think about your questions Oh, and you know what? I should skip ahead. I'm going to skip ahead to, uh, I'm not going to go to the slide because the slides are, well, maybe I can. Can I go to the next? Which is the Gimme 5. See, I did it. Bluetooth keyboard. Um, Gimme 5 is our, is our section where, you guys know what it is, but in case you're new, you, want, you guys pick five instruments, anything here, uh, and uh, put it in the, chat, put in the comments, and Roseanne will pick one of you, one of your sets of five, and then I'll do a live looping at the end with those five things, all right? So let's go back. Can I do it? Yes! I love that it's working. All right, I think I can do the show from here. It's not that easy, but so far so good. All right, so what is PUPS? I'm going to uh, walk you guys through. You can do this with me, and I'm even though I can't see or hear you, I'm going to just walk you through it. Uh, so you can kind of experience it. Um, so here's how we transfer uh, a rhythm from one, one person, let's say the teacher, to another person. We'll call them the student for now. Uh, but you're just want, you just want to transfer rhythmic information. And, and this could also work for other things. You know, doesn't have to just be rhythm, but we're just focusing on rhythm right now. And the idea... The overall idea is that you use, you always have the pulse and that the teacher and the student take turns and the responsibility for playing the pattern, it starts with the teacher and it ends with the student. So we're literally handing over 
this information, but the way we do it is kind of uh, specific. And there's four steps. I'm gonna go through them quickly. The first step is align with the pulse. So I will play the pulse and you join me however you want. Just join me with the pulse. It could be tapping, stepping, you know, whatever. And as the teacher, I would then check. I'd check, I'd be watching you, I'd be listening to you. Can, are you with the pulse? You know, are you with me? Are we together? Now, if the answer is yes, we go on. If the answer is no, then we need to work on that. And there's ways we can address that. But the, the other three steps are gonna depend on the first step being successful. So we're gonna take that as a given right now. I don't know what you guys are doing out there. I'm assuming you can play the pulse. So good for you. Let's go on. So that's step one, play, uh, play the pulse, align with the pulse. Step two, teacher says the rhythm. Teacher says the rhythm. Student, play the pulse. You guys don't do anything yet, just listen. Just listen, play the pulse. ba da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba 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 Are you doing it? Don't do it yet. Just listen. Play the pulse. One, two, pulse with me. ba da ba 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 da ba 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 da 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 Now say it if you can. Ba da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba 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 ba. Now, if you can say it um, and play the pulse at the same time, then do it. If you if that's confusing for you, just try to say it with me, and I will I will be playing the pulse for you. All right. So you can do either of those things. Uh, but try to get so you can say it with me. That's the number one priority. One, two, let's go. Ba da, ba 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 da, ba 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 da, ba 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 ba, 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 ba 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 ba. Now, I want you to try to, so that's kind of two, two and a half. Uh, now, I want you to play the pulse, and I will play the rhythm, and you're on your own. You got to play the pulse by yourself while I play the pattern, and you can still try to say it with me, and I'll do, I'll try to do as much as I can. So, you're on the pulse. One, two, ready? Da, 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 da. Okay, so if you can do that, now go back to saying and playing, all right, saying and playing the pattern, uh, and I will play the pulse for you. One, two, let's start together. Da 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 Go. Da 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 So that's a quick, that was a very short, quick walkthrough. So first, play the pulse uh, for the student, play together, and then teacher says the pattern. And then student plays the pulse, you join, and uh, teacher plays the pattern, student says the pattern. Playing the pulse or not, I think saying the pattern uh, with, with or with, without the pulse might be easier, but they, the first thing is they've got to be able to say it first. Then uh, the teacher is going to play the pattern uh, and the student's going to keep the pulse and then switch at the end. So the teacher plays the pulse and now the student is playing and saying the pattern. And so from the very beginning, we start with the pulse. 
we start with listening. The student hears the pattern. Now, why is that so important? It's important for the student to listen to the pattern while the pulse is happening. Why? What's the benefit of that? Well, believe it or not, just listening and integrate your, those two things are going to be integrating in the mind of the student. So the student doesn't have to do the work of playing the pattern. They can just let their brain sort them out. Where's the pulse and where's the pattern and how do they fit together? And that is happening even while listening. And we call that receptive. But your brain is still is still working on that puzzle, right? So let your brain, let the student's mind work on that before they try to do something. And then why do we start with vocalizing? Well, that's the easiest thing, ba our basic instrument, our voice. You know, they say, if you can say it, you can play it. So if you can say it in time, <laughs> you can play it in time. So that's why we go to saying it. And then we go to, you know, either the student playing the pulse while the teacher plays the pattern. And that's kind of like a check. Like, do you know where the pattern is? Is this going to throw you off? Can you keep the pulse while I play the pattern? And then you hand it off. You give them the pattern and then you play the pulse uh, as a support. So that's kind of the process of PUPS, pulse under pattern sequence. It's a it's a step-by-step -step methodology or procedure. You guys are free to use that. That's also in the book, which is over here. I have to remember, I point in the opposite direction as it looks uh, on my screen. All right, that's it. That's all we're doing on um, the world rhythm stuff. So remember, get the scan the QR code if you want to see a larger, a longer video about this. And uh, right now, we're going to Q and A. And then uh, you guys want to be doing your give me five lists, right? So whatever you see around here, just pick five things and I'll do the live looping in a minute. So I want to ask Roseanne and now I'm going to go look at my phone so I can see the comments. Uh, any questions now? Now is the time for questions. So put, put them in the comments and we'll, you know, we'll take a, a couple minutes to just wait for any questions. And uh, if you had put your question up in there already, please put it again right now so we're not scrolling and scrolling and trying to five, trying to find, I was reading the gimme five, trying to five your questions. Um, and I wanna ask you guys, how are you guys doing? I do appreciate you being here. I can see like thumb up, thumbs ups and little things flying up in the comments. From here but that's about all I can see uh, so you guys like the camera views by the way I put the um, let me know if you like this also I want to get your feedback so this is the wide angle overhead it's my wide angle lens I only have one wide angle right now so then this is the side view obviously and uh, but I think this is good for techniques I need to get a, a thing for the for this camera over here so I can like one of those gorilla arm thing. I don't know what they call it. So I can just quickly change it, right? So I can move it up and down. But what do you think of this? Does this work for the live stream? Is this better? I think it's pretty good. I can talk to you here. I can show you stuff with the other two cameras. Um, and I might get a fourth. I might get a fourth camera. I have the capacity to integrate that. But three cameras uh, is a lot. Um, all right, any questions? Thanks, Mary, for the comment. Yeah, I think the angles are good. I might want to get another uh, wider angle lens for the side view, just to you know, just to have it, just to have a little um, flexibility there. But I think the overhead is good, and uh, it might be good to have an over-the-shoulder view. But I can I can fiddle around with the overhead. Uh, that camera, by the way, is only it's just right here. It's like three inches above the top of your screen. So it's a pretty wide angle. I mean, that's, it's getting a lot. It's getting from there to there, which is this much. <laughs> so it's like, it's like that. Um, so David D asked, do you have any more, do you have more videos on stick work? Um, 
I've got a, a video on timbales that has sticks. I've got, I think I did a video on how to play dune dunes and maybe one on Cerdo, do I? I don't remember. Um, not a lot on sticks. Uh, I do, I did a video on snare, on drum set actually a long time ago. Oh, you know what? I think I do have a video on snare drum technique, basic snare drum. I think that's on the channel. So you could look at that and that has, you know, how to hold the drumstick, how to play. I'm pretty sure that video exists. Uh, basic drum technique, basic snare drum technique, uh, because that is a big, it's a popular subject. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you plan on playing snare drum or not, it's the same technique. It's just holding a stick, playing with a stick. So it could be snare drum technique or drum set, you know, technique. It's, it's pretty much the same. So I would look for that. Um, good suggestion, Lacey, about getting a bigger monitor. Yeah, I thought about that, um, but I think I think what I need to do is maybe get a laptop, and then I can just have it right here, and I can do the show like where I am. Um, you know, I have a small studio, so I I can't run, I can't put things everywhere, run things around. Right now, I have a a um, iMac over there on my desk and it works great, but I, you know, that's why I, when I go over there, I can see it, but right now everything's so small. One of the things that's frustrating about this particular program is I can't change the font sizes. I can't change the size of anything in the windows. You know, usually, and I'm sure some of you do this, you know, as we get older, we have to make every, the fonts bigger. Uh, sometimes I do that for my emails and things. I just make everything bigger, but I cannot do that on this program. I don't know why. And uh, I can't even change the background. It's like white letters on a gray background. It's really kind of hard to read unless you're right next to it. Um, okay, so Dave, yeah, arthritis. You know, I, I, got, I had a little arthritis too uh, in my, my joints, in my hands. And I got this stuff. I don't remember what the name of it is right now, but I got this. Um, I actually got a cream thing. It actually worked. I was really surprised. And is it Vol Voltex or Voltrex? Something, something with a V. Um, that works. Also, don't don't play if your hands are cold. You know, warm up. Make sure you warm up. Uh, you could also try one of those compression gloves, like a light. Those little gloves that you can wear. Um, I tried that for ha some hand pain, joint pain. Not necessarily arthritis, but it did help overall. Uh, and uh, yeah, make sure you warm up, and of course, don't strain your hands. Uh, and then eat eat well. <laughs> uh, and I, I wish you well with that. I know it's no fun. Um, all right, let's see. Give us a tune. <laughs> all right. Uh, it looks like we're in Gimme Five land. So, oh yeah, Volteren. Volteren? Thank you, Roseanne. What is the second word? <laughs> Emul gel, emul, emul gel, emul, emul gel. I can't pronounce those things, but yeah, that stuff's pretty amazing. It it actually works. Um, who knew? I thought all that stuff was like snake oil, but apparently not. Or maybe it actually has snake oil in it, and that's the thing that works. All right. Let's do some Gimme Fivin, and um, it's 6.05 right now, so we'll go, you know, a few more minutes. Thanks again for waiting, you guys. I do apologize for, uh, that was such a such a bonehead move. I saw the timer, you know, on, on the screen, it counts down. I, I watched it count down, like, okay, let's go. And it, But I actually have to hit the button that says go live. Yeah, it's not enough to just, for me to go live. I have to tell the computer. Why doesn't the computer know and read my mind and do what I want? That's what AI is for, right? Should be coming. I, that's what I want. I want the AI computer version so I can just be like, computer, go live. Go live. I wonder if Siri could do that. I don't think so. I'm going to ask for that in the next software update. I'm just going to be like, can we just have it, when it hears the drum, can it just go live? That would be the best. All right, give me five. Mary. Mary Steelman, uh, woodblock, check. Egg shakers, check. 
Jimbe, Cowbell. Oh, sticks by themselves. All right. We can do that. Maybe it'll be a stick solo coming up. All right, so I have Cowbell. Cowbell eggs block, Jimbe. Let's move this. And how about a tempo? Slow, medium, or fast? Or you don't care? Thank you, Rebecca. She said, worth the wait. Um, so I'm going to clear this out. And just let me know, put it in the, in the comments if you have a uh, preference for, and I'm talking to, to Mary right now, if you have a preference for any kind of tempo or feel. Uh, slow, okay. All right, that's good. So let me see this. Let's see. <laughs> Lacey's like, reggae style. I don't know, it's not your gimme five, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> you guys are like, it's like you just photo bombed, you just like gimme five bombed somebody's gimme five. That's okay. We're a community. It's all good. Um Let me see. I'm 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 checking my like uh, my guide track here what I want to use. Let me see if I can find something Just give me a second. All right, I think we're good. Okay, reggae is good. You got approval. That's good. Okay. I don't know about this guide track. <laughs> oh, hold on. All right, reggae shaker, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> okay, wish me luck, here we go.
we could keep going, but we're already over. But thank you for that uh, challenge and the inspiration and suggestion. Look, you guys, I really appreciate you all. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, let me see. What do we have here? Give me five. All right. <laughs> A little bit late. Uh, thanks for stopping in. Thanks to Roseanne again for being here, keeping things moving. And look, Roseanne, uh, I just want to show you something over here. Maybe you can see it. This is for you. Come in your way. The Rafael Toledo Pandero. Uh, and then I have one left. You guys can watch the video on that. Um, just thought I'd let you know. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, we will be back on time. God willing. Next week, next Tuesday. Tell your friends and see us over at patreon.com slash Kalani. Um, I just hope you can go make some good music. You know, we need more music. And we need more good music, but I'll settle for crappy music too. I mean, I'll just all the music is okay, <laughs> but we're here to help you and support you and bring you guys together. Um, one other thing, be sure to uh, check us out at patreon.com slash Kalani. And remember that we also have the, uh, somewhere down there in the, I don't know where it is. Percussion, our percussion masterclass every second and fourth Sunday. That is for patrons, uh, but you can join. You know, if you, I mean, if you if you want to learn and you're and you're into um, you know improving and you'd like to hang out with me and other people and uh, just you know work on yourself and ask questions and get answers and see what other people are doing. Join us for the percussion masterclasses every second and fourth Sunday, ten thirty uh, Pacific time via Zoom. Uh, at least for now, until we come up with something better. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Appreciate you. And uh, I'll just leave you with a little jam. How about that? We'll see you next time.